Hi folks, welcome back to another video, another message. This is DoorDash Sucks on YouTube, and if you're new to the channel, could you please take a second to uh, hit the subscription button, the notification bell, and the like button so you won't miss any more videos in the future. And always come back to the channel and physically check to see if there's videos that I've posted because YouTube has a has a, uh, a real knack for really not giving you notifications, okay? It's a lot of censorship that goes on on YouTube, and they don't want you knowing certain things. And so always come back to the channel, even if it's a week later, so you can see if there's any videos that posted. Hold on a second, folks. I'm just checking this order. Another idiot order come through from Uber. $6.49 for eight miles. No thanks. I mean, I'm going to tell you, folks, this gig economy is getting really, really bad and I knew it would anyways because of the predictions of everything that's been going on. And um, the markets are absolutely saturated, folks. Um, people that never thought that they would ever come on to these, these food apps, delivery apps and stuff and rideshare are all coming on. Now, with that said, I, you know, a big shout out to my friend Jay Watts, Uber, Uber, uh, Uber Jeep Arizona out in Arizona. And... Um, you know, he has a positive attitude, and, he and you know, he's making it. You know, he's doing what he's doing in his market. And I love the guy. I love you, Jay, if you're listening to this. But I'm going to tell you right now, we are all suffering. I mean, I'm suffering. I, I could tell you firsthand how bad it is. One of my subscribers, Thomas, had written in uh, a couple of comments before. One of the comments he made was he talked it over with his wife. And talking about how that this would not sustain their family long term doing this work anymore. And it's it's not possible for a lot of us. Some of you, you're blessed. God bless you. I'm I'm so glad you are. Look at this one, folks. 750 for 10 miles. I'm glad I'm doing this video at, at a uh, sort of a busy time, but it isn't busy for me, folks, because I'm one of the doldrum people. I'm one of the people who decline a lot, right? And I'm a 69% to 0 percenter, right? Meaning that's the acceptance rate. I'm not a top dasher, nor will I ever want to be. My whole channel was created to expose the fraud that's going on within these companies and the, uh, the theft and the, uh, the criminal activity that goes on with these companies. And the thing is, folks, is that, you know, these companies had whistleblowers who came out and admitted that they were doing all of these these uh, criminal activities and stuff. If you look at the Uber files, I think it's uberfiles.com, and you look up the... Um, I, I read that article to you. Probably most of you have seen that. Uh, it was called um, Uber Took Bribes from Government Officials. I mean, Uber Bribed Government Officials and People in Government to Have Their Agendas Passed Through. And you know, folks... All of the app companies are very similar, right? They're similar because they're all run by the principal stockholders of all these other companies or venture capitalists. Some of them are like, don't even want to be known, so they're not listed in, in there. But I'm telling you, if you trace things back, if you really research, you'd see that almost all of the app companies, e even in a roundabout way, an indirect way, the CEOs or the, the people are friends with those other people from those companies. And they all go to board meetings and these agenda meetings, you know, at least once a year to push out a, an agenda like across the entire um, spectrum of transportation. All right. In delivery and in ride share and all that. That's the reason they put themselves in place, folks. It wasn't to make a better community and make a better life for everyone. It was to get control of everyone so they could control everything that you do. Everything, like, including the money you make. You know, Pedro did a video, which I'm going to be putting out shortly. I mean, probably later tonight or tomorrow. He did a, a video on talking about how the market is capped. The market is absolutely capped for a lot of people. And they have this this Ponzi scheme going with these with this friggin' top dasher, and it's the same thing with Uber. Even Instacart, 
You do not get any really good orders from Instacart. It's all lowball orders, folks. When I was driving before the pandemic, the, the, the fake one that happened, okay, <laughs> I was making pretty decent money on certain orders that would come through. Um, look at this. Eight to, uh, I'll take this one because this is almost two to one. I'll take this one. Um, that's a At Northwest toward Union Street. That is a rare breed that I get one of those folks. I mean, and tonight has been horrible, like horrible to the point, like I'm only making like 40 bucks right now. And I've been on since 430. It's a Thursday night, folks. I'm in a busy zone and I'm getting these, I'm getting all of the crumbs. You see, I, through my investigation of what I've been doing and testing the market and beta testing and trying to do top dasher, but I never achieved it. I got up to 58%. Doing it along that way, I've learned so many things. I've talked to drivers on the on the road, you know, and I've and I talked to people. Look, I, I told you guys in a in one of the videos before I was sitting in front of a restaurant, and you might say, Oh, what are you sitting for? Because I'm sitting because I'm not gonna waste my gas like idiots like you who are listening to this, who are gonna and I'm not saying my subscribers per se, the people that disagree with what I'm trying to tell you. You can disagree all you want, but the facts are the facts. The more you drive around, the more you're wasting gas. But where you sit anyways doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're 10 miles away. If there's a top dasher that has a higher rating than you, the top dasher gets the, gets the, the cake first. They get to choose the, the order. It's not like they're giving them a good order. Well, actually, they do, they do hide the good orders for the top dashes, especially the large order program. That whole large order program has to end, folks. The top dasher has to end, okay? It needs to be fair for everyone. But the problem is there's too many drivers now. And people are quitting in droves. People are getting W-2 jobs now because they realize they can't sustain. Thomas my, Thomas Schubeck, my subscriber, told me that he, he knows it's not sustainable. It isn't. What do you think Pedro was telling you in his videos that, oh, set goals one day at a time, bet on you, right? But he said, always have an out or, or some goal for a future thing or, you know, put your foot in something else. In other words, this isn't sustainable. This whole gig economy was meant to screw people, folks. I know that's really hard to believe for a lot of people that are listening to this that may be new to this channel, but... If you look up the, the goals of Agenda 2030, the UN Sustainable Development Goals that they planned for the 21st century, they call it, you'll see that the transportation sector was tagged to become what it is now. And it's going to implode at some point. It's terrible how many bills that I'm behind in and everything else. Listen, I'm a professional driver. I've been doing this for a long time. I've been doing delivery, uh, delivery and rideshare for years but i had i was a cab driver i drove on the streets of boston i know what it's like to make really good money and cash tips and all that none of these people should be even tipping in an app they should be giving the driver cash and the thing about uber jeep arizona that i'm real proud of is that he started kind of a campaign of his own where he was telling people you know his customers hey there's something wrong with the app. Don't tip in the app. If you're going to tip me, tip on the Venmo or tip on, uh, you know, uh, PayPal or, you know, whatever, uh, you know, platform you have in order to receive money. Right. And isn't it funny how his investigation led him to actually find that now he's getting tipped. He's having, listen, I used to take, I used to take delivery, I mean, uh, ride share folks. I'd have 25 or 30 people in my car during that time. I'm a really nice guy to people. I'm very polite. I'm like so kind and, 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 and you know, I'll spark up a conversation with anyone. Long story short, you know, like I realized that some of these people are, I was, I was getting like maybe one tip out of 30 people and I couldn't understand it. Now, after listening to Uber Jeep Arizona's videos and what he talks about, about that, you know, he, he listen, they stole money from him. Like a, a guy said, Hey, I'm going to leave you a nice tip in here, 25 bucks or 50 bucks. And he didn't even get that. Then when he went into his statements and everything later on, after he complained to Uber, what happened? Uber took, uh, deleted the, his, his earning statements 
It's insane what these what these companies see. They they have no oversight. They have no one looking uh, into what's going on because no laws have really been passed to do so. And when and when the laws do get passed, Uber and these companies, they Uber and the companies they don't even follow the law. They don't follow the law of what's happening, folks. It's unbelievable. So, like, even the, this past week, folks, I've noticed that when I'm sit, I'm around, sitting around, or I see guys that I met in the past six months or a year, fellow dashers, and I see them going into stores when, I, when I'm sitting right there before they get there and they go in. They, I mean, I know some of them are top dashers, and they tell me they are. But it's not fair for the rest of us. It's not fair for the little guys. It's not fair for people who, who don't want to take everything. And the way these companies are going now, folks, is they are going towards only catering to the people that take everything. They are punishing all, all the rest of us, all of the cherry pickers, as we call ourselves. And we have every right to because we're independent contractors, right? Which is a lie. We're not. We're not independent, but that's what they tell us, right? But if you're independent, you should be able to have any of those orders that come in, large order program or not, top dash or not, you should be able to get a chance to get those orders. Not. It shouldn't be put into a, a category. And if, if I do one thing in my life, folks, to try to stop this from happening, I'm going to form such a large coalition in the near future and going forward to try to end what's going on here. Uh, you know, th this fairness for all drivers is what I'm looking for, folks. And by the way, I'm going to mention the uh, the petition. I put out a, uh, if you look at the video that has a yellow um, uh, head header to it, you know, it's in yellow. It says, sign the petition. Please go to the video, w listen to that video and sign the petition folks because in the future that petition will be used in some form or fashion to try to help the drivers get what you deserve and i'm going to try to recover money for everyone so we all get like a residual pay or something you know it's happened before these companies have paid out before i don't I'm, i don't want to i don't care about the people who are going to be against what i'm doing because a lot of you are if you're a top dasher it's within your best interest to not sign that petition because it's, I'm going to end the Top Dasher program. I'm going to have it ended, folks. At some point, it's going to end. I'm telling you, come hella high water, folks, it's going to end. With that said, I'm going to play Pedro's video now uh, that I recorded earlier the other day. And I uh, wanted to go over that video. So watch the rest of this video. And I'll catch you guys and gals on the next one. Take care. And today's video, I want to go over a recent video that DoorDash uh, Pedro Santiago did, um, actually here on the 28th of, uh, of September. Uh, and he doesn't really talk a lot about this in, in, on his channel much, about controlling um, the driver's earnings, you know, the app companies. And we all know they are, folks, but he kind of disagrees. Now, that's okay to disagree, but, like, I, I see so much evidence of that because i'm dr when you're driving on a daily basis folks i mean pedro doesn't drive full time anymore he just does it part time because he has his channel and a lot of other things going on but we i'm out here 70 hours a week at least look at thomas schubeck one of my subscribers he had i think he said an 84 hour week where he worked 84 hours you think that's normal folks in china it's normal because over there, it's all slave, slaves and slave wa wages. I mean, wa um, people that are being forced to work these crazy hours, you know, because they're in a communist country. We're turning into a communist country here, folks. Absolutely. If you don't think so, you're, you're delusional. But anyways, let's, uh, I'm going to roll this video, but it, it's about, it's about, are we being controlled? Are we being held back from making money in our areas? Hey, my my day that I had last last night, right, had everything to do with me being controlled because I was getting all of these crap orders that that just were ludicrous to take. That no one in their right mind would have took took the uh, the orders. I couldn't, and then they then they weren't sending me any. And I'd clearly be sitting in front of a restaurant, and I'd see three or four dashes come in picking up orders, and I'm sitting there waiting for orders. This this shit 
has to stop, folks. I mean, I am getting so pissed. That's why I created that petition that I put up last night, folks. Okay? That petition is really important. If you haven't seen that video and you don't haven't gone to the links to that, please do because just watch the video on the petition, folks. All right, let's roll this video with Pedro. This is only about 10 minutes long, but I'm going to critique it a little. Here we go. Oh, man, that sun is crazy. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to say, I'm going to be on Pedro's live stream on Sunday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you missed the live stream, it's okay. You can go back and watch it. But I'm going to be on his stream. I got to get back in touch with him, too. I have his personal phone number and everything, which I cannot give out to anyone. <laughs> uh, his privacy is privacy. But anyways, let's roll the video. Here we go. Woo! All right, let, let's move so we can talk. So DoorDash is capping what you make in your market. They're controlling the money you make. Some people think that. Let's talk about it. <laughs> Welcome back to Mr. Bet on You. We talk about the gig economy, using it as a step of stone. Bet on you set goals one day at a time. Now, welcome for all the new people that are here. Appreciate it. all the OGs. Appreciate you for coming back. <clears throat> let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me put my hair up for this one. Okay. <laughs> There's been chatter, and I've talked about it on some lives, but I don't think I made like a separate video. So there seems to be an opinion that DoorDash is capping your earnings. And that they are controlling what we make. Um, we don't really have much of a say so. You know, we can accept and decline, but like they're controlling the amount of money you can make. And I've seen some really good arguments on both sides cap team, no cap, team cap. And like, you know, if you hear enough of somebody say something on one side or the other, if you hear it enough, sometimes it's like, oh, is that right? Oh, is that wrong? I'm gonna let, I want you guys to decide in the comments. Okay. All right. Let me let me say something before we go on, folks. I want to say that the Top Dasher program in itself is a capping program. Do you know do you want to know why? I guess, you know, maybe Pedro, if you're listening to this, listen to my take on this, okay? And you might you might get a little bit different perspective. Cuz I know you don't think that you're being capped, but your market is a very unusual market. I mean, I know you make money in what three hours you can make usually a hundred, hundred and twenty bucks in three, four hours, sometimes more. That is not possible in my market. I could show you my earning statements for the whole year. I haven't made past seven hundred and forty five dollars a week since I started with DoorDash. I've never had a nine hundred or a thousand dollar week ever. So that right there will tell you. Now and I'm pretty good. I mean, I know how to multi-app. I know what not to take. I know how to go to certain zones. I know the whole thing. I learned from you. <laughs> I learned from a lot of stuff from you, but I used my own techniques too. But the thing is, is that if you think about it, Top Dasher, right? This Top Dasher program, if you have to have 70% and higher to, in order to achieve seeing better orders that other people don't get, and it only trickles down to the, the, the cherry pickers that are 69% and below all the way down to zero, which is considered a tier one, supposedly, right? And obviously, these this has been tested by a lot of people. If you can't get more orders that are, are the better, higher paying orders, or, the, or if you're not in the large order program, how can you make better money? You are capped. I've, I've tested this a million times in my market where I would you know, watch what comes in. And even when I take, if I took everything in one hour, I basically only make 22 to 25 an hour. I mean, but it's really not. If you think about it, how can it be 20 to 25? You're, you're using your gas. You're, you're paying for ex expenses like food and coffees and drinks. Maybe some of you can cut down on that and not do that. That's good. That'll save you some money. But when you're all said and done, what do you really have in your pocket at the end of the week? It's all about what your net is, not what your your gross is, right? So think about if just the mere essence of Top Dasher prevents the lower tiers from making the money that the Top Dashers are making. So of course you're capped. Think about it, Pedro, if you see this video. All right, let's continue. And by the way, I can't wait till Sunday, man. It's going to be great. All right, uh, here we go. Let me explain this a little bit. 
So while everything could be market is different, your markets are different, demographics, I've talked about this, right? You know, the amount that the people in your area tip or not tip, your base pay could be different, all that stuff, right? But DoorDash specifically, there are people that are saying that we're capped. That in your area, DoorDash is capping you at this amount because they say you can make $20, $25, whatever that amount is in your And, by the way, another thought, because I want to say it before I I forget it. I have never made, never made more than $227 in one day, in one shift. Okay? And my general amount of money, even if I stay out all day, is between 140 and 170 if I'm even lucky to get there. It's maybe 180 once in a while. But remember, you got to put gas in the car. You're going to spend at least 30 to $40 in gas for that shift. I mean, 30 minimum, right? So what do you have? If I had 200 bucks, all I have is 170 I mean, some of you guys, even you, Pedro, you're making, what do you, you make 200 a day, two fifty, maybe three hundred. Then after, and you put gas in, you have a nice two hundred in your pocket. We don't have that, not in my market, anyways. Here we go. Your zone, your town. <clears throat> this is. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give my two cents, and I'm. I'm gonna promise. I'm gonna try not to talk about this anymore. But you know, this is what we do. We talk about things that are other people like to talk about and discuss and debate and go back and forth, and it's fun. Yeah, and, and Pedro, please don't stop talking about it. You need to talk about this. These are the things that need to be discussed. Because like you just said a, mi- a few minutes ago, if everyone's talking about it, I mean, do you think everyone's lying? You, you're in your market, remember? what What's different from your market could be totally different from someone else's market. Your market could be, you could be so blessed that you could make three, $400 a day, every day, no problem, everything's great. The rest of the country's going to hell in a handbasket. And, and so like, that's important because... We're all over the country, for, uh, folks, and, and Pedro. We, I mean, you live in St. Louis. I live in Boston. You got people in the West Coast, East Coast, middle, you know, uh, you know, out in Las Vegas, all these areas. Everything's different, you know, but everything's the same also, too. All right, let's continue. On YouTube, it's all about opinions. I want to hear y'all's in the comments. If DoorDash is saying in St. Louis you can make 20 bucks an hour. I'm of the opinion that that's the minimum cap. And they want new drivers to be happy with that because they... In the DoorDash app, it tells you if you read about earnings, it will say that you can earn up to $25 an hour. How come it doesn't say you can earn $100 an hour? How come it doesn't say you can earn $50 an hour? Because they have the market capped. The algorithm won't send you more. I uh, I mean, if you're a top dasher, you may be able to get 30, 35 bucks an hour. I do, I do agree with that. But it's screwing the entire community. That's the reason why I, I wrote up a petition to stop all of this. It, the petition's not going to stop with just writing a petition. It's going to be used in court in local and state municipalities and even federal court if we can get it in there. But the point of it is, is these are the practices that are causing people to be capped because we can't make the money. I mean, I know it might be hard for you to see that or understand it, but because when you're well off in, or whatever, you're making decent money, it, you know, everyone else kind of seems secondary, right? But continuing. I need to take everything. I'm not going to say there's a cap in my market or any market. Because the cap is what you make it based on your decision making hmm. and based on your knowledge. So if you- Well tell that tell that to the three hours that I worked last night where I sat and had to decline these clown orders that came in. They paused my dash th- uh, two or three times during that time. And then they they stopped giving me orders for a while and I was in a busy zone. And at six o'clock after three hours, I just gave up and I quit. I made zero dollars last night. And I, you know, I just did not look, none of them were good. I didn't want to compromise. Maybe one or two of them possibly I could have done, but then what are they going to give me where I'm going? I'm going to go out of my zone and all of this stuff. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. All right, let's continue. You want to be somebody that wants to be capped? and think that that's, they're capping you and they're controlling your earnings, do that. I want to be somebody that controls 
my money a little bit more. So think about it like a W-2. When you get hired at a W-2, let's say you and your fellow employee, it's training day, orientation, you both got hired at 15 bucks an hour, you're happy, you're doing orientation, boom. Fast forward to huh. a month later, three months later, whatever it is. You know, I mean, Pedro, we're similar in age, but when I was little or when I started working, you know what the minimum wage was? It was like three three twenty five minimum wage was, right? And then it went up to three seventy five. Then it went to four twenty five. Then it went to five twenty five. Then it went to five seventy five. And I'm talking nationally. And then it went to like I think it went to six seventy five. And then it went to like jump to nine or ten dollars. And now we're sitting around fifteen. But if you think about it, the fifteen dollars is the same thing as it was back when it was three twenty five when I was a kid. So the thing is, is none of us. The inflation is so bad that the that your the money is not worth. You have to make. Do you know what you have to make, folks, to survive in America? I mean, when I say survive in a normal city and whatever that that's you know high rent and stuff. You need to make like $35 to $40 an hour like at this current time. About 10 years ago, they did a poll on Yahoo or something, uh, a Gallup poll that talked about, you know, what do you need to be making just, just to cut the mustard, just to pay the bills and put roof over your head. And that was like 18 or 20 bucks an hour back then. This is 10 years ago. We need to be making 40 bucks an hour to, to like, it's, and that's not even living comfortable. You may think it is, but it's not. Look at your food bill. Look at your electricity bill. Look at what you pay for all these things. You know, it's insane. All right, continue. We're almost done here. They're going to do an evaluation, and you're going to possibly get a raise based on that evaluation. Now, that particular company is capping you, or whatever, at 15 bucks an hour. Your performance in what you do and how you control and how you move and how you work will determine if you're going to go from 15 to 16 bucks an hour. If you're somebody that just kind of does the minimum, not trying to get better, not trying to learn that job, you're going to stay at 15 bucks an hour. The company might want you to stay there. I don't know. It's easier for them. They're paying you less. Or if you're somebody that wants to learn your market, learn that job, you can get a raise. On this channel, we teach you how to get a raise of 5 to $8 more per hour than whatever this cap stuff is about. I think these companies are really good at manipulating drivers. But listen, Pedro, it comes down to this, and whoever's listening to this, you can't control what that app is going to send at you. You can't press a button or look at the, the behind the scenes what that app is going to send you at any given time. It's also controlled on how many people are ordering food. If you have 500 uh, drivers in one given area, let's say, okay, and the market is saturated, and you have, say, 50 restaurants, but the 50 restaurants are only, at bare minimum, putting out maybe two or three deliveries per every half hour or every 20 minutes. Divide that between the amount of drivers there are and see see how much, uh, how many orders can come out. And then, then you have to divide it by the number of top dashes that are getting called to go do that delivery first or having a chance to take an order that came through. Because nine times out of ten, when an order comes to a person who's less than the top dasher acceptance rate, you're getting the crumbs that are falling down from the plate of the top dasher that refuse that order. It's clear to see that because I saw it firsthand by myself last yesterday, last night, because I was sitting in front of a restaurant and I saw three people that I knew were top dashes because I talked to them months before. And these are people who take all the orders. They then what's called 99 percenters. And I even asked the guy, one of the first guys that I knew, do you take all the orders? He's like, yep, everything. He goes once in a while, I decline. I said, what's your percentage rate, your acceptance? He said 99. Okay. I, another guy walked in, he got a large order out of there. I was sitting at this place, folks, for over two hours, and I didn't get a chateau. The one thing that was funny, as I was talking to my one of my fellow friends that, that's on this, you know, he comes on this channel too to watch the videos, and he works in my market, and he, and we, I had to call him back at one point. I told him what happened. I said, I ended my dash, it sucked, blah, blah, blah. I'm, well, 
I don't know if it was before or after, but I, I called him to say, guess what happened? As soon as I left the restaurant that I had been sitting at for two, two hours, folks, I was five miles away from that restaurant. And what do you think came in? The Chateau restaurant that I was sitting at, at an order for six seventy five with three items going five miles. And I was like, I was ripping. I, and I just laughed at it because I'm like, really? They're going to slap me in the face. It's almost like the algorithm knew where I was and said, ah, I'm going to break your balls and give you this one. And, and, and so now force you to come back. I had driven away from the area because I was trying to get into another area to try to accept orders because there was nothing coming from there. And plus those three top dashes had already taken those orders. I should have been first because I was at the location first. I was there before anyone. In the old days, folks, Uber and Lyft, when you, or at, at least with Lyft, I know this for a fact, if you were one of the first um, drivers in a given area, you would be put into a queue. Like you're, you're the first in there and it, it, it's like a first come first serve. I don't mind even doing it that way. Even if they went back to that old system, that would be great. This top dash of crap is not good because we can't make rational decisions based on hidden, hidden tips, hidden trips, hiding all kinds of information. And the next video that you're going to see that I'm going to post soon that you'll see is a video by the gig geezer. And then the gig geezer is back, by the way. Uh, he started posting more videos. And I told you guys back, what, it was a month ago, two months, uh, yeah, a month ago, I did a video. And I said, my friend Chad was talking about how they were hiding item counts in certain marketplaces. And he did a video on it. And we're going to go over his video. But they're, they're changing the, the whole system, folks. It's going to, even for top dashes, it's going to be hard. Because if you can't know what the items are, you can't even know if something's like a potential hidden tip and all this stuff. We shouldn't be shown hidden hidden items. We should be shown everything. Full transparency, folks. All right, let's 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 finish off Pedro's. I'm not going to play the entire video here, but I wanted to go over what some of the stuff he said. Let's go over a couple more minutes. Using, using verbiage and lingo to make you think like it's something that it's not. If you have the mentality that you're being capped, then you are. If you have the mentality that you're being capped, you are. One more time. If you have the mentality that you're being capped, you are. All right, if Pedro. You have the Pedro, did you ever think that we are being capped? I mean, you don't know that for sure or a fact. I know it for sure because I, I've been experimenting. I've been beta testing. Other people have. Look at UDM's algorithm uh, videos that he did about a month ago. I think it was a month ago, maybe three weeks ago. Uh, man, the time just goes by fast. It's insane. But in, in, one of, in his series of videos, part one, two, and three, he, he showed what was coming through and he called it like he was negotiating with the algorithm. And when he would decline something, then another order would come through to try to make up to that 20 to $25 an hour slot. So no matter what you do, whether you decline, whether you're a top dasher, it doesn't really matter, but they are catering to some top dashes. And of course, if you're in the large order program with top dasher, yeah, they, they cater to you because you're, you're, t you're cleaning up, you're making all of the, the blood money that they sucked out of everyone and stole from the drivers and the customers to get, to give you back, you know, your little, uh, demon troll money that you, that you, uh, being paid to do evil for that company. It, you should be ashamed of yourself if you're a top dasher. All right, let's finish off this, uh, this video Buddy that you want to Oh, one other idiot too. I want to say some idiot wrote my comments and I hit him from the channel. I don't even know what his name was, but he came in and had the gall to say that we, all of us, all of us dashes who are cherry pickers or whatever, we're, we're the ones who sat on our ass for two years doing nothing. And when we could have been out making money, that that's, that's totally the wrong attitude. And he's going to learn when he, when the economy crashes and he has no job to work, none of us will be even be working at these app, these gig apps because there won't be any people ordering any food. I can tell you that right now, folks. Mock my words in the future. You watch. Strategies. Continuing. Learn this, learn that. It's not difficult. Then you can make more and make your own cap. Because at the end of the day, your demographic, your area, 
how much effort you put in, you're going to make your own cap. DoorDash isn't going to cap you. You're going to do that. Huh. And in most markets... Yeah, but, but Pedro, most of, the, most of your days when you drive and you make money, you're only out, what? I mean, you might might do an 8 to 10 hour day, but you're done after that because you go home to your family. What do you usually have after the 8 hours, Pedro? You got about 300 bucks in your pocket. The rest of us aren't making that. I mean, you, you are, if you have that market, like you say it is and everything, you are truly blessed. You, you should be, you should be thanking God for that, that you, that you are in a, in an area like that. I mean, I, I don't want to move away from where I'm at, but I'll tell you one thing. If I was going to continue doing these apps, which I want to, I, I, I would probably want to move to St. Louis. Cause if I was in the same exact area where you are, I could probably make what you're making. Any of us could. Maybe we should all move to St. Louis. <laughs> Anyways, get, let's finish this off here. For me, it's 30, 35 bucks right now. See? I'm not going to be able to make more now. 30 to 35 bucks an hour he's making in his market. I'm making less than 20, folks. I'm making 15, 220 if I'm lucky. Because it's, I mean, it's bad. It's mostly 15. Here we go. In St. Louis, some hours I might make 40, 50 bucks if I get lucky. But... That's not going to be normal because of the demographic that I'm in, the times that I choose to work. If I work Friday, Saturday night and Sundays, which I don't, I would make more per hour because I'd see bigger orders. But I put myself in the 30 to 35 dollar range based on the time that I work and how I move. My girlfriend started doing DoorDash. She's making 18 to 20 dollars an hour. Is DoorDash capping her? I don't know. Maybe it's too early to say. But why do I make significantly more than she does? So what's the cap? Is it 20 or is it 30? Are there different caps? Is DoorDash manipulating and capping you? Are they holding orders and sending you this and sending you that? Yep. And yes, they are, Pedro. They are. They absolutely are. I mean, I know you. it's hard for you to understand that because you have to, you know, you want to see proof or on paper. But... Watch any of the any of the comments in this in this video. I guarantee you, my my subscribers will come in and tell you how capped the market is. I mean, we're not we're not making this up, Pedro. If I was, why is my channel called DoorDash Sucks? Because they suck. They they it's not you can't right. But even though they suck, yes, I need to work. I want to be independent. I want to. I don't want to work for a boss. Really, I want to do my own thing. I've done that most of my life. I want to be my own boss, but I don't want a company capping me. I don't want a co company who's stealing from me. I don't want a company who hides what I need to know in order to make good decisions to make to take a delivery or a ride share. I don't want to go into some program they want to put me in. I want to do my own thing and make my own way. But we, we are slaves to what they want us to do, and we need to change that. We need to make it fair for everyone, not just you or anyone else. Everyone should have a chance to make three or four hundred dollars a day. Not just some people, all people, even young kids who are 18 that just started. They should be able to make the same money. That's that may be my opinion, but I want to make it fact. I want to turn it into facts. All right. It's we're almost done here. Playing this mad science game. I don't know. You guys tell me what you think in the comments below. What do you make per hour? Actively, dash time, whatever. How do you... Down below. And don't you think the drivers that make about the same per week are making about the same per week because they're working the same zone, working the same amount of hours or days, and their demographic in their market, they're picking up from similar restaurants? Hey, I Pedro, uh, or anyone listening to this, I make... I mean, I work seven days a week. Do I work Do I work 10, 12 hours a day? Some days I do, some days I don't. But when in my area, it gets slow after 9 o'clock and everything starts closing too. So from 9 to 12, you're going to get these crap like Wendy's orders, if you're lucky, Wendy's, Taco Bell, and all that. And all of the um, drive-thrus are all closed mostly. And you're going to get crap tips, crap orders, and it sucks. So now you're forced to get up like, like last night or, or well, today, as you guys are seeing this, 
I will have been working from seven o'clock in the morning till two on my first shift. And then I go home for two hours and then I'll do a four to midnight. But I don't stay on till midnight unless it was busy because I'm not going to just sit around from nine to 12 getting maybe four or five orders or six orders that's only going to add up to another 20 or $30 for three hours where it's like where I'm only going to make like 10 bucks an hour. I'm, I can't do that. So I end up going home at like 8, 830. And I in whatever it is, it is. Sometimes it's 140 in my pocket, 120, 110. That's the that's the norm for me. Making 200 bucks is like is almost absurd in my area. All right, let's do the final stretch here. They're delivering to and accepting or cherry picking or not similar orders. That's why they're making about the same amount of money. It's not rocket science. Are you team cap or are you team no cap? Do you think DoorDash is controlling your earnings and you have nothing you can say about it? Yes. If you're part of that group, cool. But then we really shouldn't be seeing any more tips and tricks videos because it doesn't make any difference. 